Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an overview on this motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte 990FXA UD3. Now, this is definitely not a new motherboard. It's been out for a little while, but it's a very popular motherboard on the Newegg.com website. And it's a very good choice for anyone looking to build an AMD-based system. Uh, so first off, with the 990FX chipset, you get unlocked performance, so uh, you get full overclocking features available with, if you're going to go with a higher-end AMD processor. It's also an ultra-durable 3 motherboard, which means it got, has twice the copper used in the PCB design, also 50,000-hour Japanese solid capacitors. Uh, it's also got some other features listed down here. It's an AM3 socket motherboard, so uh, fully ready for AM3 Plus CPUs. That includes the FX series from AMD. And this board does ship with the new AM3 Plus CPU BIOS installed. Uh, if you go back several months, depending on when you watch this video, uh, originally some of the 990FX boards that came out had BIOS that actually were not compatible with FX processors. This one ships with that BIOS installed, so you should be good to go if you're going to go with an FX series unlocked processor from AMD. You also get the 9 series chipset, so 990FX Northbridge and 950 Southbridge from AMD. Uh, again, some more info about the capacitors. Uh, triple USB power for charging devices more quickly. Of course, USB 3.0. You also get SATA Vision 3 by uh, virtue of the 950 Southbridge chipset. 108 decibel signal to noise ratio, Blu ray appropriate uh, sound integrated. You also get a dual BIOS, which means you can switch back and forth between them so you can have different settings set up, or you can use one BIOS for overclocking and then switch back to a default uh, if you're having any troubles. You also get support for three terabyte plus hard drives. The hybrid EFI technology in here allows you to actually boot from hard drives larger than three terabytes, uh, which if you go back to older BIOS versions, you could not boot to any drive that was larger than 2.2 terabytes. Uh, then some more information about the SATA and USB capabilities. Let's take a look at the back. Uh, here we have some more in-depth information about a lot of the stuff that I talked about on the front, so I won't go over it in too much detail. Uh, you do get on-off charge capability, so via uh, special USB ports on the board, you can charge your devices even while it's not plugged in, uh, as well as uh, you get, oh, I should mention ATI, or AMD, I should say, Crossfire X support for two-way Crossfire X, as well as two-way SLI compatibility. Next up, let's take a look at accessories to see what comes in the box, apart from the motherboard. You get a giga gigabyte case badge, so you can pop that on your computer case to advertise what type of component you're using inside. Uh, you get a, an SLI bridge here for two-way SLI. It's actually long enough that it can go across six slots, so uh, there's a couple different uh, video card configurations that you can have in there. Uh, again, also Crossfire X supported from this motherboard, uh, the Crossfire X uh, bridges usually come with the video cards themselves. You get four serial ATA cables. They're black, just like these here. Uh, they all have clasps on the end. Uh, it looks like you get two that have L brackets on one end and two that have straight plugs on either end. So variety there for depending on how you have your drives configured and installed. Uh, here is your 990FXA UD3 motherboard manual. Very important to keep on hand while you're doing your build. Uh, you also get an installation and driver disk here, so that'll have some of the software included with the board. It'll also have default drivers that were available at the time that this disk was stamped, which means that there's probably new ones available if you go over to the Gigabyte website, and it's best to use the most up-to-date ones. So uh, download your drivers from Gigabyte rather than installing them off the disk. You get a multilingual installation guidebook as well, so if English is not your first language, that should help you out with the installation. And you also get an input-output shield here for the back of your case. So you can see they're color-coded, all of the ports on there, so you can tell which are which. So that uh, wraps up for accessories. Let's take a closer look at the motherboard. So here's a look at the 990FXA UD3 motherboard altogether. As you can see, it's got a mostly black aesthetic with some uh, gray heat sinks scattered throughout. I'm going to start off here by flipping it around and showing you guys the back. So there you can see it's a black, all-black PCB. Uh, has a real nice clean look to it, and the uh, heat sink, at least for your south bridge, is mounted with uh, Phillips head spring-loaded screws, so you can remove that if necessary. Uh, Taking a look at the front of the board, I'm going to point out the fan headers first off. There's four of them total. Uh, you got a four-pin PWM-enabled CPU fan header right here at the top. You have a three-pin power fan or chassis fan header right here. Another four-pin system fan header down here on the right side, and then finally one more system fan header down here next to the firewire port. Uh, let's go over all of the uh, features of the board in detail. I'm going to start here in the bottom right. Uh, as you can see, you have your front panel connectors. They are housed in a little plastic casing. They're color-coded uh, in the back there, so it'll more easily let you determine which is which. Next to that, you have a TPM header, if you're into that sort of thing. 
You also have a USB 3.0 20-pin header right there, so you ha can uh, hook up a couple front panel USB 3.0 super speed ports. Uh, you get one, two, three USB 2.0 headers right here. The red one here is compatible with that uh, triple power USB 2.0 design, so you can use that. That'll have the always on power and will also charge your devices more quickly. Uh, a couple more USB 2.0 headers next to that. You have a COM header, the aforementioned system fan header, three pin right there, a firewire out, and then finally your front panel audio connectors, which is right below uh, all of your audio devices and hardware for the board. Next up, let's talk about the PCI Express. Uh, and you have PCI Express Generation 2 or 2.1 ports right here. Uh, for starters, you get a couple X1 slots here at the top and in the middle. Uh, you get a couple X16 physical slots as well as wired for X16. So the uh, second one here and the fifth one here are the ones where you will want to install your video cards. Uh, so you actually get triple, sl triple slot spacing in between those, so it does have support for, for dual or three slot video cards. Uh, in between those you have a X16 physical but wired for uh, X4 PCI Express slot. Uh, you got another one of those X4 uh, slots down here at the bottom. And then finally a legacy PCI slot right there if you've got an older PCI device you need to plug in. Moving on to the right, uh, we have the Gigabyte heat spreader right over here, which is uh, directly above the uh, Southbridge, the S SB950 Southbridge chip uh, from AMD. Uh, that's going to power several things on the board, but it also has a controller hub for your serial ATA. So all six of these serial ATA ports here are SATA revision 3, that's 6 gigabit per second, so it does support uh, your high-speed SSDs and also has some RAID configuration options available through that. Moving up the side of the board, I should also mention those are all uh, side facing, which you could probably see anyway, but that uh, helps to prevent those from uh, conflicting with any longer length video cards you might have. Moving up the side of the board here, you have a 24 pin main motherboard power connector, and then next to that you have all of your DDR3 slots. Um, just to pull up some information for myself to reference here, uh, you have these four DDR3 slots, it's dual channel DDR3, so you'll want to install at least two sticks of memory at once. Uh, it's best to go with 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs. Uh, so if you go with 8 gigabyte DIMMs, which are the max supported on a per DIMM basis for this, you can get up to 32 gigabytes of system memory installed. And it does support standard speeds up to 1333 and 1600. Uh, this is going to depend on what processor you have installed, uh, but does support overclock speeds of up to 2000 megatransfers per second. Uh, now again, over here is the AM3 Plus socket, and, and uh, I was talking about what type of um, CPU might ha ha actually have installed there. It's compatible with a range of processors from AMD. AMD uh, has kept their sockets the same for the most part as they've gone through their upgrade cycle. So they actually have compatibility with uh, Athlon 2, Phenom 2, uh, as well as most AM3 processors and AM3 Plus FX processors. Um, which chances are if you're buying this board brand new you're going to go with an FX processor for that and the AM3 Plus uh, sockets are distinguished because they are black as opposed to the uh, white coloration that's used with the uh, AM3 and prior uh, AMD sockets. You also have this universal mounting solution here for aftermarket heat sink fans so uh, most AM2, AM2 Plus or AM3 aftermarket heat, sinks fa heat sink fans will work with this socket um, and most of them do attach directly to that, which uh, usually negates the need to install a motherboard backplate. That's going to vary though, so um, you can reference the Gigabyte website for the full list of compatibility options for CPUs, and uh, you should reference your aftermarket heatsink fan, heat fans compatibility guide to make sure it will work with this particular socket. Now we do have the 990FX Northbridge uh, chipset on this motherboard as well, and uh, it has this sort of raised gray heat sink right there. Uh, it gives it a bit more surface area to keep that chip cooled off. Uh, you will want to have some airflow going over that as well to make sure that everything stays nice and cool. Uh, also with the uh, AM3 Plus socket right here, you have your power delivery area. You have eight plus two phase power delivery for your overclocking needs. Uh, another heat sink right here to cool off the VRMs to make sure that that area stays nice and cool, especially if you're going with an overclock, very important for that. And then finally you have your 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector up there. Definitely want to have that plugged in, make sure you have a power supply that can deliver enough juice for your entire system. Again, particularly if you're going to be interested in overclocking any of the AMD processors you might have installed here. 
Let's uh, finally take a look at the inputs and outputs on the back of the board. Starting off on the far left, you have a combo PS2 port right here, so that can uh, work with a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, all these red ports here are USB 2.0 ports. Uh, all of them have the uh, enhanced power delivery as well as the always-on function uh, that we talked about earlier. Uh, so you get plenty of those, actually two, four, six, eight of those total back here. You have an optical toss link connector here for optical audio out. Uh, you also have a FireWire port. You have a couple uh, serial ATA or external eSATA uh, ports right here. Those are both serial ATA, ATA or Vision 3, 6 gigabit per second compatible. You get a couple USB 3.0 super speed ports here, so that gives you uh, the availability of up to four USB 3.0 ports total, two here on the back and then two more available via that internal header. Uh, you get your gigabit Ethernet port right there. And then finally, you get your audio. Uh, you should mention the audio is Realtek ALC889 codec, uh, supports up to 7.1 channel audio out. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte 990FXA UD3 motherboard featuring the 950SB Southbridge, the 990FX Northbridge, and the AM3 Plus socket with out-of-the-box compatibility with AMD's newest line of FX processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.